Destiny is full of secrets that many people don't know, whether it's holding the jump button to go higher or the fact that damage numbers are often wrong. This pulse rifle says it's dealing 20s on screen, but actually deals 19. So I set out to create a Destiny IQ test with 50 questions getting progressively harder throughout the video. Keep track of your score to find out which rank you are because getting all 50 right earns you the ultimate level 11 paragon, but less than 5 right and you're a new light. Look out for the bonus point in each difficulty section starting out with easy. Did you know that mobility only affects your walking strafe speed but not your sprint? And that it only changes how high your initial hop is, not the full amount of boosts within your jump? Most people think of Demolitionist as the perk that gives you grenade energy on kills, and that's true, but they often forget that it also reloads your weapon when you throw your grenade. In PvP, dodging with the Hunter Exotic Gemini Jesters will show two damage on screen, which not only blinds them, but counts as an assist in your final KD. Kickstart mods give you energy back when using that specific ability. Having armor charges when you do it give you more based on how many there are, but it still works even if you have zero. There's also a lot more to this mod than you would think, which we're going to explore in the advanced sections later in the video. Question number 5 is around Kill Clip giving you a damage buff after reloading, but did you know it doesn't have to be through that animation? Other reload mechanics in the game can proc it too, like Marksman Dodge or even Dragon's Shadow. Stacking two of the same mods does not double the effect. Bungie implements something called Diminishing Returns, which means adding more of the same mods helps you less and less each time. Say for instance I'm using Bomber on my class item. That one gives me grenade energy every time I pop my barricade. If I add a second Bomber mod, it gives me a tiny bit more, but nowhere near that initial bump, and adding a third one is diminished so much it's basically zero, so do not triple these up. Your Titan barricade can go right through a wall to damage someone, and it's shocking how often you can make this work in PvP. Character stats only change your cooldowns when crossing the 10 threshold. For example, 29 intellect is not better than 20 and only improves once you hit 30. Staying on the topic of gear stats, did you know that going up each tier is not the same bump every time? Continuing with intellect, there's a huge benefit going from tier 2 to 3, but not much at all going from 3 to 4. When driving your sparrow, holding forward on the joystick or W on the keyboard does absolutely nothing. A chance to get a bonus point! Most new players use their boost at the start and then never let it go, but you can keep pressing that button for more speed until you run out of the charge in the bottom corner. If you have the assembler perk on your sparrow, you can even transition to a brand new one mid-flight between your charges. With the easy section complete, that's 10 questions down, and if you got them all right, you're sitting at the initiate guardian ranking as we move on to a tougher set of questions. The word dim is tossed around quite a bit in the community, and it stands for Destiny Item Manager. It's a third-party program that can be used to manage all of your gear, like pulling weapons from the vault and moving them across your characters. When you sprint on Titan, it procs your shoulder charge or shield bash, but did you know that you can keep it procced during a slide, even after shooting a weapon, allowing you to do something like this? Font mods add an invisible boost to your ability stats. A single Vigor will add 30 strength when it's active, but they don't let you circumvent the 100 stat cap. So if you already have 80 on your character, then you're not getting the full benefit of the mod. Anti-barrier rounds not only stun a champion, but also let you shoot through Hydra, Phalanx, and Hobgoblin immunity. And on the topic of anti-barrier, being radiant will make all of your weapons have that. But taking that one step further for question 16, there's some interesting mechanics. When you slow an overload champion, it will stun them, but if you try that while you're also radiant, it won't actually work. This is because the game prioritizes radiant and converts that slow shot into anti-barrier instead of overload. If you're falling down with none of your jump or boost left, you can still prevent fall damage by using things like a sword, Icarus dash, or even a movement melee. These mechanics also work if you're getting yeeted horizontally towards a wall. The powerful attraction mod lets you pick up nearby orbs when you use your class ability, but did you know they also pick up motes of light and gambit? Having armor piercing rounds on your weapon lets you shoot through teammates, so if you've got buddies who love to strafe in front of you during a DPS phase, consider this perk on your sniper. Did you know there's 9 contributors to how fast you can get your super? Number 1 is the intellect stat just passively filling the super bar. Number two is which super you happen to choose because they all charge at different rates, like the bubble being way faster than Sentinel. Number three is picking up orbs, whether it's the big ones from someone else's super or even the small ones from something like a Siphon mod. Number four is simply getting kills, but remember the type of energy also changes how much. 
Number five is in addition to that kill, you also get super for simply dealing damage. Number six is the fact it works the other way around too, so taking damage also helps you get your super faster. Number seven is the amount of super you get for the two I just mentioned. Dealing and taking damage are also dependent on what kind of super you're playing. A bubble titan dealing or taking 100 damage will get more super than if they were on sentinel. Number eight is that weapons matter too, so dealing that same 100 damage with the primary will get you more than if it was with a special. Finally, number nine are through mods, like how ashes to assets will give you a huge amount of super on a grenade kill. Bonus opportunity for section two is that there's actually a 10th method to get your super. Certain exotics can also get you a bunch of super, like the Titan's Doomfang Pauldron, where powered void melees give you a ton. If you thought of that one, give yourself the bonus point, and with 20 questions down, let's check the IQ meter. At 100% rate, you've officially reached the Adventurer ranking, but now we're dipping into the hard difficulty, so buckle up. The Warlock Exotic Sunbracers is very popular, but commonly misunderstood. When getting a powered melee kill, it procs a 5 second timer for infinite grenades. Most people rush to throw them as soon as possible because of how quick that timer runs out. What they don't realize, however, is that's just how long you have to throw your first one, which completely resets it to a fresh 5 seconds. Now speaking of exotic armor, Destiny has 120 of them, and even if you've purchased every single DLC, there are 3 of them locked behind the 2019 Shadowkeep campaign. Storm Dancer's Brace, Assassin's Cowl, and Phoenix Cradle. No amount of Lost Sectors, Nightfalls, or Exotic Engrams will drop these until you beat that campaign. Peacekeepers say they improve your movement while using an SMG, but did you know it works out to being plus 50 mobility on your character? How about those pesky Threshers shooting at you from above? Would you have guessed that you can stop them from shooting by blinding them with a flashbang grenade? For my friends playing Steam, did you know you could access Dim right in the game with one hotkey? By pressing shift tab, you open up their menu where you can access the web browser. This is basically just the internet, but the trick is setting DIM as your homepage. That way, next time you're playing, you can pull it up automatically with the original hotkey. And by the way, give yourself a point if a question is about a platform you don't use, because it's not realistic for you to know. I just wanted to include some tips I thought of while writing the video. Heavy Handed creates orbs with powered melee kills. The offensive bulwark aspect on Titan makes your regular melee count as powered while overshielded. This allows you to make infinite orbs with your regular melee. Vorpal is a weapon perk that boosts damage against bosses, vehicles, and supers. I still hear a lot of people say it's a 15% buff like it's this flat amount, but it actually varies based on the ammo type. I can shoot Carl here with three different ammos and the buff will change each time. The handling stat on your weapon impacts three things. The first is how fast you pull it out, called ready speed. The second is how quick you can aim down sights, otherwise known as ADS. The third is how fast you put it away, called stow speed. All of these contribute to how smooth your weapon swaps will feel and caps out at 100 stat. Bringing this one step further though, you can still get your swap speeds to be faster than that cap because it's modified in two ways. First you have the weapon stat, which is what we just talked about, getting it as close to that 100 as possible, but then you have scalers. This is something that looks at the physical animation of that swap. For instance, if I pull out my shotgun here, it takes 0.8 seconds. The dexterity mod on your gauntlets is a scaler. When I put that on, it doesn't boost my shotgun's handling stat, but instead looks at the animation and makes it 20% faster. Bonus point time! Because of how scalers work, you're always better off using a dexterity mod on your lower handling gun to cut the most amount of time total from the weapon swap. Give yourself an extra point if you knew that. Sticking with handling for just a moment longer, the quick access sling mod is also a scaler for helping swap speeds, but do not use it on a sword. Those have fixed animation times that do not change. Now with section 3 complete, if you've got 30 points or more, you're sitting at an elite guardian ranking and we're ready to move on to the difficulty level expert. Ambitious Assassin is a weapon perk that can overflow your magazine, which means adding ammo beyond the weapon's capacity. People like this on a grenade launcher because it allows you to get over its cap of 1, making it very strong for ad clear. What some people don't realize is that because the perk is tied to how many kills you get before reloading, you can actually use those two shots to get 11 kills and proc up to 3 in the mag. Your weapon's recoil stat is between 40 and 100, but what does that even mean? Well, it's all about how much your weapon's gonna kick and in what direction. 
For example, this 58 recoil pulse kicks to the right, but when I change it to 68, it'll kick to the left. This is because recoil follows a graph resembling a Christmas tree. As you go higher and higher, notice how the wave flips back and forth between left and right? That'll tell you what direction it's going and gets tighter the closer you are to 100. Now if you play on PC, did you know that the mouse wheel can be really handy for your jump on all three characters? On Titans, it allows you to do something called skating, which is scrolling your mouse wheel, effectively hitting jumps super rapidly. For Warlocks, it can have the same effect, but amplified on ramps, launching you forward. And on Hunters, it can be a great jump height in between your initial hop and using all your boosts. Moving on to the next one though, did you know two weapons with identical handling can have different swap speeds simply due to the animation type? These two on screen are exactly the same and shoot at different times because of this, which is why I tend to get triggered using Wastelander or Chaperone. Finishers can sometimes count as your subclass element, so if I'm on Dawnblade playing my Sunbracers build, I can use that as a solar kill to extend Radiant Restoration and even Heat Rises if mid-air. Did you notice the Navigator Exotic Trace Rifle gets reticle friction on teammates unlike other weapons in Destiny? Pulling out your Ghost counts as a weapon swap. So for instance, let's say you have a sword out with the Eager Edge perk and it goes away. A quick Ghost cancel will reset it without needing to swap back to your original weapon. Circling back to the Kickstart mods, do you know how the stacking mechanic works with armor charges? Both items count as equal units, so two grenade kickstarts and one armor charge would refund the exact same energy as one kickstart mod and two armor charges. Here's a table I've made for other videos that you might find useful when making builds. Bonus point number four! If I have two grenade charges, kickstart will still proc and refund me on the first one thrown. Same goes for the double charge on my class item, but it does not do this however for melee kickstarts. I'll be the first to admit I don't actually know why, but if you've ever noticed this, give yourself a point. The Legend of Acrius shoots so slowly that you can reload between each shot and be just as fast as compared to strictly shooting it. That's it, I just found it fascinating. If you're a warlock running arc souls, don't be scared of slow mines in the game. When you pop them by running through, your arc buddy will target them preventing the slow. With that section down, it's time for an IQ check, so if you've got 40 points or higher, congratulations, you've reached the Vanquisher Guardian rank. 10 questions remain as we move on to the insane difficulty level. When aiming the Darcy Sniper, there's a bunch of information it gives you. In the top left, it'll say what percentage of health or shields the enemy has, how far away they are in the bottom left, and then even their power level in the bottom right. Funny enough, you need to add a 1 to that one nowadays, which is kind of telling for how long we've been playing Destiny. Let's talk about the stability stat, because it has three purposes. Number one is the visual recoil. Even though recoil has its own stat in this game, people commonly refer to that term as the visual kickback when shooting a gun, and stability reduces this. The second thing it does is flinch resistance. When someone else shoots you, your aimer kicks up, and higher stability on a weapon will reduce the amount. Number three is related to aim assist, but in a pretty unique way, so hear me out. Survivor's Epitaph says 74 aim assist, and I want you to picture that as a cone. It's invisible while you're playing, but as long as your enemy is within that cone, the bullet will actually bend towards them and give you your shot. Adding aim assist makes that cone bigger, meaning easier to hit your enemies. The catch, though, is that every time you shoot, the cone actually shrinks for a moment, then grows back. What this means is the more you spam your weapon, the less effective your aim assist is and where stability comes into play. When shooting with high stability, it'll only shrink a little bit, meaning it refreshes much quicker for your next shot. The best way to think of it is that higher stability makes your aim assist more effective. But okay, that was a bit of a doozy, so let's talk about the glow on your ship. If you change its color while in a fire team, all of the other ships with glow also change to match yours. What's funny is they won't even see it on their end because this is a client-side interaction, meaning only your perspective changes. Weapons experience damage drop off as you go further and further back, but have you ever heard the terms damage, floor, or ceiling? What happens is they'll do max damage, known as the ceiling, up until a certain point, then your weapon's damage goes down at a constant rate until it hits something called the floor. This is the minimum damage you can do with the weapon, and you won't go any lower even if you keep going backwards. Did you know that rocket launcher damage is broken into two segments? When they first hit, they deal something called impact damage, but then the explosion afterwards is called blast damage. The reason people care about this is because certain perks in the game only boost one of them. 
Another chance for a bonus point is that if you can think of one of those perks. I'll give an example on why it's so important with impact casing. This is generally known as a 10% buff, but since it only applies to the impact damage, the true result on your damage phase is only an overall 2% buff. Now that's 45 questions down and five bonus points so far, meaning if you've got every single one right, you're officially a Paragon at level 11. If you miss some, don't worry. With five questions left, there's still a chance, but we are moving into the ludicrous difficulty. When you get a new piece of armor with random stats, did you know it's not quite so random? First off, the highest possible legendary is 68 base stat. When you masterwork them, it adds two to each category, but I'm talking about the base. When your gear is dropped, there's a couple of rules it follows. The first is that individual stats are between 2 and 30. The second is that Bungie splits your drops into two halves. The three stats within those halves have to add up between 22 and 34. So if you pay attention when you get armor with like two crazy high stats, they're always split between top and bottom. But what about exotics? Because a lot of new people think that the cap is 68, even though their friends have these older ones dropping at 71. Well, this is a bit tricky because they follow the exact same 68 rule. That's their cap, similar to legendaries, but then they add a predetermined bonus specific to the exotic. Geomags, for example, will no matter what add one reseal and two recovery. So they might calculate out like this, but what you actually see is the added bonus bringing them up to 71. If you pay attention, none of the exotics introduced since Beyond Light have higher base stats than 68. Ammo finder mods say an increased drop chance on a kill. What people get confused about is the tooltip below mentioning primary final blows, especially exotics, help you more quickly. Part one of this question is did you know these do not require primary ammo kills to activate the mod? Weapon kills of any ammo type can make these mods drop more bricks, like this heavy weapon dropping that green finder brick in the back there. Part two of my question is did you know that finder bricks glow bright while the normal ones don't? In this clip you can see all four kinds of them drop with each different visual indicator. And then finally for part 3 on how these finder mods actually work is that they're on a counter system. Going back to that clip I just showed you, I want you to picture an empty bar for each of the two finder mods I have equipped. As I'm getting kills, those bars are slowly filling up. Once it's full, that glowing finder brick drops and the counter resets to zero. Heavy weapon kills fill those bars the slowest, then special weapons, followed by primaries giving way more, hence the tooltip, and lastly exotic primaries giving the most. But moving on to the next question, if you think you've mastered the creation and sharing of loadouts in Destiny, you probably know what DIM is, right? But what if I told you that even the in-game ones can be seamlessly created and shared amongst anyone? I'm going to show you exactly how it's done, so either watch and learn or see if you already knew to earn your point. Step 1 involves a website called D2 Armor Picker. After logging in, you can tell it exactly what stats, exotic, and mods you hope to create in a build. The website evaluates every single item in your account and spits out a bunch of options for you on the right hand side. Step 2 is expanding it and hitting open loadout in DIM. This will bring it up for you and leads to step 3 which is just to hit the save button. Now it's in your loadouts and step 4 is just hitting apply to equip it to your character. Step 5 is being able to press save as in-game loadout for whatever you have equipped. Pick your symbol, name, color, all that jazz, and voila, you now have it directly in your game. To share that with your friends, follow these steps. Number 1, hit the share loadout button on DIM. Step 2, send them that link with your favorite GIF. Step 3, they open their DIM and go to the loadouts tab. Step 4, hit the import loadout button. Step 5, paste the link and follow the steps from before. Save it in DIM, apply it to equip in-game, save as in-game loadout. There are three main buckets for the level of an enemy in Destiny. Miners, Majors, and Ultras. Miners aren't just the easy ones, in fact there are four tiers of them across every race in the game. So using Cabal as an example, I've put up some screenshots of enemies that you might recognize based on what ranking they are within those tiers. If you're on the default color setting, their health bars will be red, but honestly the best way to identify this entire category is by their square icon. All minor enemies will have that. Even an acolyte is still square, just with a different symbol in the middle compared to Cabal. Majors are a bit more complicated in the fact that there's three subsets. You have elites, mini bosses, and champions. 
Starting with elites, they're basically just upgraded miners. They follow the same four tier structure, so the examples from before still apply, only this time their health bar is orange with a shield icon. The second subset are mini bosses. These enemies have a downward triangle for their icon with gold health bars. The third subset are champions. They also have a downward triangle icon because they're technically mini bosses as well. I just wanted to separate them given the fact that they have specific stun mechanics. To go one step further, notice how this barrier has a red triangle. That means they're above my level, whereas this anti-barrier isn't red because they're on my level. Finally, we have ultras. These are your real bosses in the game and they share two subsets. The main one you see is a diamond icon. That's when you know you're fighting a boss. It's generally a brighter yellow health bar. But the second subset are actually those pesky vehicles like the infamous Thresher. Last but not least would be custom bosses from say a raid, like this guy who's definitely about to end me here. I also want to take a moment to thank a community expert who goes by the name of Court. I've put his logo up on screen and he makes a ton of infographics out there detailing this type of stuff, so I'm going to link it in the description too. Now after all of that, for question number 50, could you list which enemies fall under the weapon mods for PvE? I wanted to include this because I see a lot of people still get confused on when they should use Major versus Boss. But then of course you have the Taken mod which applies to all enemies at every level and it's even a higher buff. So that was 50 questions and 5 bonuses along the way to see where you rank, but I'm not going to leave you hanging on that first one in the intro. I said this pulse shows 20s on screen but was wrong. Well as an adaptive archetype, the true damage from this pulse is only 19.005, and if I asked you to round that number, you'd probably say 19, right? But Destiny doesn't follow traditional rounding. If damage in the game is even a sliver above the integer, it rounds all the way up to the next one. So if you want to learn how I use that knowledge to determine the best possible resilience for all three characters in the game, then click on this thumbnail.